Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another Adventures quiz. Friday night, 7.30, Quiz with Adventures. Welcome. Tonight, as you know, is a Netflix quiz. Um, so tonight is a test whether all your binge watching in lockdown so far has paid off. Um, so as you'll see from the um, Facebook group, uh, event page there are eight different rounds of 10 questions with eight different uh, series I will tell you which series obviously we're going to do within the first within the rounds um, and as always there's 80 questions 10 uh, 80 questions eight rounds of 10 questions and I will do the first round give you the answers second round give you the answers and so on and so forth um, with me having a peaky blinders uh, category within the quiz this evening and me being from the black country there was only one option for a tyre this evening I'm a peaky blinder I don't even have to put an accent on because it's just my accent uh, some of it was even filmed about 10 minutes from my house so there's a fact for you um, so yeah it, we'll get started shortly it's going to be quite a quick one tonight i would think because i only have two shout outs this evening so um we will go a little bit quicker than normal uh, but i will still give you some time to get your answers together the questions will be put on facebook at the end of each round in case you miss anything and as normal the questions and answers will be put onto my website after the quiz so if you've missed anything um they'll, they'll be over there and you can play again with friends and family or anybody that's missed it can play uh, later on and the youtube video will be saved as well so let's get started shall we um i will do some little um announcements later of how much we've raised so far and what the plan is going forward for these quizzes um beans as we're already coming to the end of may i don't know about you guys but the time is flying uh, it does help that I've got a seven month old. He keeps me busy. Um, so let's go into the quiz, shall we? So as always, get a piece of paper and a pen, get your friends and family together um, and let's see who wins. And let's see which programme you know the best. Some I understand you probably won't have even watched, um, but that's why I've done several different ones so that different people can join in on different parts. So the first round, round one, is all about stranger things. Okay, so it's all about Stranger Things. Ten questions. Number one. What is the name of the fictional town where the show is set? What is the name of the fictional town where the show is set? Number two. As seen written on the screen, in what year did season one take place? So as seen written on the screen, in what year did season one take place? Number three. What is the name for the parallel universe experienced in season one? So what is the name for the parallel universe experienced in season one? Number four, <clears throat> which tabletop role playing game were the children playing when Mike's mum, Karen, said they all needed to go home, leading to Will's disappearance? So which tabletop role playing game were the children playing when Mike's mum, Karen, said they all needed to go home, leading to Will's disappearance?
Number five. Which Clash song is played multiple times during the show, as it is said to be one of Will's favourites? So which Clash song is played multiple times during the show, as it is said to be one of Will's favourites? Number six, a poster for which 1982 horror movie hangs in the Wheeler's basement? So a poster for which 1982 horror movie hangs in the Wheeler's basement? Number seven. During episode one of season one, so the very, very beginning, which TV show is playing whilst Mike's father attempts to fix the TV aerial? Were you paying attention? During episode one of season one, which TV show is playing whilst Mike's father attempts to fix the TV aerial? Number eight, which brothers created the Stranger Things series? There's a tricky one for you. Which brothers created the Stranger Things series? Number nine. What is the slug-like creature that Dustin finds in the garbage and adopts? What is the slug-like creature that Dustin finds in the garbage and adopts? And number 10. Who broke into the government lab and found the entrance to the creature's world in chapter five? Who broke into the government lab and found the entrance to the creature's world in chapter five? Whilst you get your answers for those, I will just do the two shout outs that I've got for the evening and then I can put my little piece of paper to the side and we can just carry on with the quiz. So uh, a shout out to Sandy the saxophonist in Leeds. I hope you enjoy that one. And uh, happy eighth birthday to William Richards. Hi, William. Happy birthday. I hope you've had a lovely day. And hello as well to Maisie. I hope you both enjoy tonight. Um, and I hope you score lots of points. So there you go. Shout outs done. It's a quiet one this evening for me. I'm used to loads of shout outs. Um, so if you do have any shout outs that you want done during the evening, just message me. They will pop up. And if I do catch them, then uh, I will do them for you. Um, OK, let's go into the answers for round number one. So number one, what is the name of the fictional town where the show is set? It's Hawkins. Number two, as seen written on the screen, in what year did season one take place? It's 1983. 1983. Number three, what is the name for the parallel, par I can't say that word quick, parallel universe experienced in series one, it's the upside down. Number four, which tabletop role playing game were the children playing when Mike's mum Karen said they all needed to go home, it was Dungeons and Dragons. Number five, which Clash song is played multiple times, it's Should I Stay or Should I Go? Bet you'll have that song in your head all night because I have. Uh, number six, a poster for which 1982 horror movie hangs in the Wheeler's basement? It's The Thing. 
Number seven, during episode one of season one, which TV show is playing while he tries to fix the TV aerial? It's Knight Rider. And number eight, which brothers created the Stranger Things series? It was the Duffer Brothers. Number nine, the slug-like creature that Dustin finds in the garbage and adopts is the Pollywog. And number 10, who broke into the government lab and found the entrance to the creature's world in chapter five? It was Chief Hopper. Chief Hopper. So there is your Stranger Things round. I hope you did all right. I hope you enjoyed it. And we will go on to Peaky Blinders. Now, I have a confession to make. I have not watched any of the series that we are talking about tonight. Not one. And I know that's disappointing, but I try not to get into series because I get addicted. So I avoid them. So... I have no idea what I'm talking about tonight, but as long as you guys do, that's all that matters. So, round number two, Peaky Blinders. Peaky Blinders. Number one. Which year is the first episode of the first season set in? So, which year is the first episode of the first season set in? Number two, who ran the gang's crime uh, syndicate while the boys were off fighting Germans in France? So who ran the gang's crime syndicate while the boys were off fighting Germans in France? Number three, what is the garrison? What is the garrison? Nice easy one there for you. <clears throat> Number four, of which group is Freddie Thorne a member? Of which group is Freddie Thorne a member? Number five, what is the name of Birmingham's local newspaper? What is the name of Birmingham's local newspaper? And I don't mean now. <laughs> Number six. Which historical figure oversees Inspector Campbell's crime fighting efforts? Which historical figure oversees Inspector Campbell's crime fighting efforts? Number seven, outside of Tommy, Arthur, Polly and Ada, which character has featured in the most episodes throughout the history of the show? So outside of Tommy, Arthur, Polly and Ada, which character has featured in the most episodes throughout the history of the show? Number eight, real life brothers Finn Cole and Joe Cole play which two characters in Peaky Blinders? So real life brothers Finn Cole and Joe Cole 
play which two characters in Peaky Blinders? Two points up for grabs there. One point per correct answer. Number nine. Which political party is Tommy officially part of when he becomes an MP? So which political party is Tommy officially part of when he becomes an MP? And number 10, which religious movement did Linda Shelby belong to? Which religious movement did Linda Shelby belong to? I'll give you a couple of minutes to get your answers. And while you get your answers, I just want to say hello to Leo Cufflin from Grimsby. Thank you for joining us, Leo. And I hope you have a lovely night and score lots and lots of points. OK, let's go into the answers for Peaky Blinders then. Number one. In which year is the first episode of the first season set in? It's 1919. And that is really weird because the amount of time we've been on this live video when I said that was exactly 19 minutes and 19 seconds. They say there's something in that. That was spooky. Am I going to get a good look? Here's hoping. Number two. Uh, who ran the gang's crime syndicate while the boys were off fighting Germans in France? It was Aunt Polly. Number three, what is the garrison? It's the pub. Somewhere a lot of you are probably wanting to go right now. Number four, of which group is Freddie Thorne a member? It's the communists. Number five, what is the name of Birmingham's local newspaper? It's the Evening Dispatch. Number six, which historical figure oversees Inspector Campbell's crime-fighting efforts? It's Winston Churchill. Number seven, outside of Tommy, Arthur, Polly and Ada, which characters featured in the most episodes? It's Charlie Strong. Number eight, real-life brothers Finn Cole and Joe Cole play which two characters? It's Michael Gray and John Shelby. So um, you can have a point per correct answer on that, two points if you got them both. Number nine, which political party is Tommy, Tommy officially part of when he becomes an MP? It was the Labour Party. And finally, number 10, which religious movement did Linda Shelby belong to? It was the Quakers. And just a quick plug after that. Um, once this is all over and we're allowed to go places again, um, my uncle owns a go-karting centre round the corner from uh, the Black Country Museum, which is where Peaky Blinders was filmed. And he has a Peaky Blinders, sort of Peaky Blinders themed escape room. And it's amazing. I've been, I've conquered it, not with very much time left. And I'm, I've done quite a few escape rooms. So it's a, it's a challenging one. Um, so it's well worth a go. So if you want any details for that, when, you know, when everything is reopened again, Please message me and I'll send you the details. It's fantastic. I highly recommend. So a little plug there for you. Okay. Round three is Game of Thrones. So, another one I have never watched. But this is a popular one. So, I'm expecting high, high scores on this round, guys. I've got high hopes. Don't let me know. Uh, okay. Number one. Who is king of Westeros? Westeros? Westeros. Westeros. Westeros? We'll go with that. When the series begins. I even figured I even figured that out earlier and I've forgotten. Who is the king of Westeros when the series begins?
Number two. What is the name of Rob Stark's wife? What is the name of Rob Stark's wife? Number three. Who was the liege lord of the Freys before the War of the Five Kings? Who was the liege lord of Freys before the War of the Five Kings? Number four, which chemical was used during the Battle of the Blackwater to destroy Stannis Baratheon's fleet? Which chemical was used during the Battle of the Blackwater to destroy Stannis Baratheon's fleet? Number five, what is the name of Arya Stark's sword? What is the name of Arya Stark's sword? Number six, there are three points available for this one. You've been generous tonight. Uh, number six, during the Red Wedding, which houses were allies against the Starks? So during the Red Wedding, which houses were allies against the Starks? Number seven. By what name do the seven kingdoms refer to the free folk who live in, nor in the north beyond the wall? By what name do the seven kingdoms refer to the free folk who live no in the north beyond the wall? Number eight, another three pointer. What are the words of House Martel? What are the words of House Martel? So I've given you a clue there. There are three words. I'm going to give you three different points because you might only know some of it. So I'm being kind. I'll give you another clue. They all start with the same letter. You probably already know it. Number nine. What is Jon Snow's direwolf called? What is Jon Snow's direwolf called? And number 10, how many episodes of Game of Thrones are there in total? How many episodes of Game of Thrones are there in total? I'll give you a couple of minutes to get your final answers together.
Okay. Let's go through the answers, shall we? Number one, who is king of Westoros? Westoros? Oh, you know what I mean. When the series begins, it's Robert Baratheon. Number two, what is the name of Rob Stark's wife? It's Talissa. Number three, who was the liege lord of the phrase before the War of the Five Kings? It's Hoster Tully. Number four, which chemical was used during the Battle of Blackwater? It was wildfire. Number five, what is the name of Arya Stark's sword? It's needle. Number six, during the Red Wedding, which houses were allies against the Starks? It was Frey, Bolton and Lannister. So Frey, Bolton and Lannister. Number seven, by what name do the Seven Kingdoms refer to the free folk who live in the north beyond the wall? It's the wildlings. Number eight, what are the words of, how, of House Martel? It's unbowed, unbent, unbroken. Unbowed, unbowed, unbent, unbroken. Number nine, what is Jon Snow's direwolf called? It's ghost. And number 10, how many episodes of Game of Thrones are there in total? It's 73. 73. Okay, number uh, round number four. This is all about quite a new one. And if I say Carol Baskin, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, again, I haven't watched this, but it is on my list to watch. Um, I do want to watch this one. I just don't have time between a seven month old and a quiz and quiz a week. OK, so. Let's get going, shall we? And if you've got that Carol Baskin song in your head now, I am sorry. I apologise because that is a really irritating song because it gets stuck. OK, number one. What is the current name of the zoo formerly owned by Joe Exotic? So what is the current name of the zoo formerly owned by Joe Exotic? It's quite a long title, that one is. So just get roughly it when you can get the point. I'm being generous. Number two, how many of Joe's husbands appear in the documentary? How many of Joe's husbands appear in the documentary? Just a reminder as well, guys, sorry to say it mid round, but I've just noticed one of those scam links been posted again on my page. Please never, ever, ever click on a link that I haven't put on. They are scams. And I'm trying to get rid of them, but they keep coming back. Okay, number three. What's the name of Carol Baskin's dead husband? What is the name of Carol Baskin's dead husband? Can anybody else say Carol Baskin without going Carol Baskin in their head? Or is that just me? I blame TikTok. It's <sighs> a bad thing. Okay, number four. How many years in jail has Joe Exotic been sentenced to? How many years in jail has Joe Exotic been sentenced to? Number five, how much money did Alan Glover say he was, say he was paid to kill Carol Baskin? 
How much money did Alan Glover say he was paid to kill Carol Bearskin? <laughs> I can't help myself, I'm sorry. Okay. Number six. It's that name again. Carol Bearskin <laughs> is described as the what of cats. So Carol Baskin is described as the what of cats. Number seven, what assets did Joe Exotic blow up to make sure Carol Baskin couldn't get to them? Two items, I'll give you a clue. Two, so there's two points. What assets did Joe Exotic blow up to make sure Carol Baskin couldn't get to them? Number eight, what was the name of Joe Exotic's YouTube series? What was the name of Joe Exotic's YouTube series? Number nine, in what field does Doc Antle claim to be a doctor? So in what field does Doc Antle or Antle claim to be a doctor? And number 10. Which item from the zoo's gift shop is a bestseller? Which item from the zoo's gift shop is a best seller? I'll give you a couple of minutes to get your answers together. And in the meantime, I'll do a couple more shout outs that have come through. So hello to the Griffiths family. Hannah says she misses you lots. And a shout out to Sam and Emily in Essex who have been teaming up against Lewis and Kelly every week. So yes, Lewis, I agree. May the battles continue each week. Thank you very much from the bottom of my heart for joining me every week. And I hope you enjoy tonight as much as all the other quizzes I've done. And all the other quizzes going forward. Because I'm not stopping. Okay, let's go to round four answers. Number one, what is the current name of the zoo formerly owned by Joe Exotic? It's the Greater Wynwood Exotic Animal Park. The Greater Wynwood Exotic Animal Park. If you've got somewhere close to that, give yourselves a point. Number two, how many of Joe's husbands appeared in the documentary? It was three. Three. Number three, what was the name of Carol Baskin's dead husband? It was Don Lewis. Number four, how many years in jail has Joe Exotic been sentenced to? It's 22. Number five, how much money did Alan Glover say he was paid to kill Carol Bearskin? It was $3,000. Carol Baskin is described as what of cats? It's the Mother Teresa of cats. Number seven, what assets did Joe Exotic blow up to make sure Carol Baskin couldn't get to them? It was his watch and a mattress. His watch and a mattress. Number eight, what was the name of Joe Exotic's YouTube series? It was Joe Exotic TV. 
Number nine, in what field does Doc Antle claim to be a doctor? It's mystical science. And number 10, which item from the zoo's gift shop is a bestseller? It's underwear. Underwear. Now, I don't know about anybody else, but if anybody else on this has not watched that, it sounds crazy. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm going to watch it because it sounds pretty cool. Okay. Number five. Uh, no, round five. It's all about how I met your mother. How I met your mother. So. Let's do this. Number one. What college did Ted, Lily and Marshall all attend? So what college did Ted, Lily and Marshall all attend? Now I have watched some of this, but not much. Number two, what is the name of the bar where the five friends always hang out? What is the name of the bar where the five friends always hang out? Okay, number three. What year is it supposed to be when Ted is telling his two kids about how he met their mum? And a bonus point, what is the name of the mum? So in number three, what year is it supposed to be when Ted is telling his two kids about how he met their mum? And a bonus point, what is the name of the mum? Number four, 50 50 chance here, guys. True or false? All of Lindsay Fonseca's and David Henry's scenes as Ted's future children were filmed during season one. So, true or false? All of Lindsay Fonseca and David Henry's scenes as, Ted, as Ted's future children were filmed during season one. Number five, what embarrassing tattoo does Ted get in season three? So what embarrassing tattoo does Ted get in series three? Number six, after dating Marshall for nine years and being engaged for a year, Lily breaks up with him and moves where? So after dating Marshall for nine years and being engaged for one year, Lily breaks up with him and moves where? Number seven, who did Barney end up marrying? Who did Barney end up marrying? Number eight, 
Number eight. How many seasons of How I Met Your Mother were there? How many seasons of How I Met Your Mother were there? Number nine. What instrument does Ted steal for Robin? What instrument does Ted steal for Robin? And number 10, what is the name of the show's theme song? What is the name of the show's theme song? I'll give you a couple of minutes to get your answers together. Okay, let's go into the answers to round number five. Number one, what college did Ted, Lily and Marshall all attend? It was the Wesleyan University. Wesleyan University. Number two, what's the name of the bar where the five friends always hang out? It's Mac the McLaren's Pub. McLaren's Pub. Number three, what year is it supposed to be when Ted is telling his two kids how he met their mum? It's 2030. 2030. And the bonus point, the name of the mum is Tracy. Number four, true or false? All of Lindsay Fonseca and David Henry's scenes as Ted's future children were filmed during season one. It is true. To keep them looking the same age. There's a fact for you. Number five, what embarrassing tattoo does Ted get in season three? It's a butterfly. Number six, after dating Marshall for nine years and being engaged for a year, Lily breaks up with him and moves to San Francisco. She moves to San Francisco. Number seven, who did Barney end up marrying? It was Robin. Number eight, how many seasons of How I Met Your Mother were there? It was nine. And number nine, what instrument does Ted steal for Robin? It's a French horn. And number 10, what's the name of the show's theme song? It's Hey Beautiful. It's Hey Beautiful. Okay, we are on to round six. Round six is all about Friday night dinner. It's all about Friday night dinner. So number one, what is the surname of the central family in this series? What is the name, it's the surname of the central family in this series? Nice easy one to start. Number two, the family always seem to be visited by their neighbour, Jim, who always has a canine companion with him. What is his dog's name? So the family always seem to be visited by their neighbour, Jim, who always has a canine companion with him. What is his dog's name? Number three, there are several mentions of Johnny having a girlfriend who doesn't come to dinner, much to Jackie's disappointment. What is her name? So there are several mentions of Johnny having a girlfriend who doesn't come to dinner, much to Jackie's disappointment. But what is her name?
Number four, how does Martin refer to women? How does Martin refer to women? Number five. What kind of company was Adam's first broadcasted jingle for? What kind of company was Adam's first broadcasted jingle for? Number six. What is Johnny's job? So number six is what is Johnny's job? Number seven. In the first ever episode of Friday Night Dinner, which magazine collection is Martin reluctant to get rid of? So in the first ever episode of Friday Night Dinner, which magazine collection is Martin reluctant to get rid of? Number eight, what is Jackie's best friend called? What is Jackie's best friend called? Number nine, in 2016, Johnny brought his wife, Lisa, home to meet the family and announced their divorce by the end of the same episode. What nationality was she? So in 2016, Johnny brought his wife, Lisa, home to meet the family and announced their divorce by the end of the same episode. What nationality was she? And finally, number 10, complete the phrase, hello, Jackie. So complete the phrase, hello, Jackie. I'll give you a minute or two to get your answers together. And then we will go through them. Okay, answers to round number six. Number one, what is the surname of the central family in this series? It's Goodman. Number two, the family always seem to be visited by their neighbour, neighbour Jim. What's his dog's name? It's Wilson. Number three, there are several mentions of Johnny having a girlfriend who doesn't come to dinner. What is her name? It's Alison. Number four, how does Martin refer to women? It's females. Number five, what kind of company was Adam's first broadcasted jingle for? It was car insurance. Number six, what is Johnny's job? He's an estate agent. 
Number seven, in the first ever episode of Friday Night Dinner, which magazine collection is Martin reluctant to get rid of? It's New Scientist. New Scientist. Number eight, what is Jackie's best friend called? It's Val. Everybody knows a Val. Number nine, in 2016, Johnny brought his wife Lisa home to meet the family and announced the divorce in the same episode. She was American. So the answer to number nine is American. And number 10, complete the phrase, hello, Jackie, you look nice. So the word you were looking for is you look nice. OK, round number seven. This is all about Breaking Bad. Number one, which year was Breaking Bad first aired? Which year was Breaking Bad first aired? Number two. At the beginning of the series, Walter must work a second job at a car wash to make ends meet. Later in the series, Walter and Skylar buy the car wash as a money laundering front for Walt's criminal activities. What is the name of this car wash? That was a long question. I'm sorry for that. But I do have to repeat it. So at the beginning of the series, Walter must work a second job at a car wash to make ends meet. Later in the series, Walt and Skylar buy the car wash as a money laundering front for Walt's criminal activities. What was the name of that car wash? Number three, what South American country is Gustavo originally from? What South American country is Gustavo originally from? Number four, what is the name of the technical technology company that was invented by combining the surnames of Elliot and Walter what was the name of the techno te honestly techno technology company it's not even a hard word that was invented by combining the surnames of Elliot and Walter Number five. What are the last words spoken in the series? There's a tough one for you. What are the last words spoken in the series? Number six. What kind of car does Gretchen drive? What kind of car does Gretchen drive? Number seven, what does DEA stand for? What does DEA stand for? Bit of a science question for you here on number eight. And there's two possible answers, so two possible points. 
Two elements from the periodic table, BR and BA, are used in the Breaking Bad title image. Name the elements. See, I've thrown a curveball in this one, a science question. Two elements from the periodic table, BR and BA, are used in the Breaking Bad title image. Name the elements. So what is BR and what is BA? Number nine, complete the iconic Walt phrase. Are you ready? You clearly don't know who you're talking to. So let me clue you in. I am not in danger, Skylar. I am the danger. A guy opens his door and gets shot and you think that of me? No, I am. Finish the sentence. So finish the phrase. I'll repeat it again. You clearly don't know who you're talking to, so let me clue you in. I am not in danger, Skylar. I am the danger. A guy opens his door and gets shot, and you think that of me? No, I am. Finish it. And number 10. Which food does Walt infamously throw onto the roof of his house? Which food does Walt infamously throw onto the roof of his house? I'll give you a few seconds to think of your answers. Okay, answers to round number seven. Number one, which year was Breaking Bad first aired? It was 2008. Number two, I'm not going to repeat the whole question because it was massive, but what is the name of the car wash? It was A1A car wash. A1A car wash. Number three, what South American country is Gustavo originally from? It's Chile. Number four, what is the name of the te technology company? Oh, I am getting confused with that word. <laughs> what is the name of the te not technology company that was invented by combining the surnames of Elliot and Walter? It's Grey Matter Technologies. Number five, what are the last words spoken in the series? And it, the answer is, well, goodbye, Lydia. So, well, goodbye, Lydia, is the final word. Number six, what kind of car does Gretchen drive? It's a Bentley. Number seven, what does DEA stand for? It's Drug Enforcement Agency. Number eight, the two elements, BR and BA, they stand for bromine and barium. Bromine and barium. Number nine, complete the iconic Walt phrase. You clearly don't know who you're talking to, so let me clue you in. I am not in danger, Skylar. I am the danger. A guy opens his door and gets shot and you think that of me? No, I am the one who knocks. So the word you're looking for is the one who knocks. And finally, number 10, which food does Walt infamously throw onto the roof of his house? It was pizza. Pizza. Okay, we're on to the final round of the evening. And it's all about Brooklyn Nine-Nine. So, number one. In, the season, in season one opening credits, what is the character Detective Rosa Diaz doing? So, in the season one opening credits, what is the character Detective Rosa Diaz doing? Number two, what best describes Gina Linetti's job at Brooklyn Precinct 99? 
So what best describes Gina Linetti's job at Brooklyn Precinct 99? Number three, which actor plays the lead character, Detective Jake Peralta? Peralta? Which actor plays the lead character, Detective Jake Peralta? Number four, which member of the squad likes to stay in the office rather than in the line of duty? Which team member of the squad likes to stay in the office rather than in the line of duty? Number five, what did Charles receive after being shot? So what did Charles receive after being shot? Number six, what was Charles's nickname from his days on his college squash team? So what was Charles's nickname from his days on his college squash team? Number seven, two possible points here. Which two celebrities guest star in the first season of this show? Which two celebrities guest star in the first season of this show? Number eight, where did Terry once live when pursuing a college education? Where did Terry once live when pursuing a college education? Number nine, who is the jokester of the precinct? Who is the jokester of the precinct? And finally, number 10, your last question of the evening. Which occasion is always celebrated in each season? Which occasion is always celebrated in each season? Give you a couple of seconds, not too long. Okay, let's go into the answers then for the final round. Number one, in the season one opening credits, what is the character Detective Rosa Diaz doing? She's banging her computer screen. Number two, what best describes Gina Lanetti's job at Brooklyn Precinct 99? It's a secretary. Number three, which actor plays the lead character? It's Andy Samberg. Number four, which member of the squad likes to stay in the office? It's Terry. Number five, what did Charles receive after being shot? He received an NYPD medal, medal for the law. So an NYPD medal. Number six, what was Charles's nickname from his days on his college squash team? It was The Beast. Number seven, which two celebrities guest star in the first season of the show? It's Adam Sandler and Kid Cudi. So Adam Sandler and Kid Cudi. Number three, where did Terry once live when pursuing a college education? It was Japan. Number nine, 
who is the jokester of the precinct? It's Jake. And number 10, which occasion is always celebrated in each season? It's Halloween. And as always, with all my quizzes, I have a tiebreaker question, just in case there's a draw within your household. So the tiebreaker question is, how many subscribers does Netflix currently have? So how many subscribers does Netflix currently have? A lot. And probably a lot of those have come during the lockdown. But there is your tiebreaker question. I will write that question on the Facebook event with the answer shortly. Um, so head over to there for the answer. And all that's left to say is thank you once again for joining me this evening. Um, we are on the penultimate quiz this evening of raising money for the NHS. We have so far raised just short of £131,500, which is amazing. Um, but I will explain a little bit more of what's going to happen for going forward next Friday. Um, but yeah, thank you ever so much to everybody that's donated, everybody that's taken part tonight and previous quizzes. Uh, don't forget to like our Facebook page, UK Adventures, um, so that you are aware of all our future quizzes and you'll be the first to know. Um, and next week is musicals. So it's all about uh, the West End and film musicals. So I hope you can join me for that. And then the week after that is a general knowledge, normal pub quiz. Um, so, yeah, I hope you can join us for both of those. Thank you to everybody for your support. We are actually finishing and it's still light outside. So that shows that summer's coming. So that's a good sign. Um, but no, keep, keep positive. Uh, keep smiling. We are over the worst and we are getting there. So keep staying safe. Keep smiling and I'll see you all again at 7.30 next Friday. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Bye bye.